of YouTube, I'm Nintendoman64, bringing you the next episode of Pokemon Heart Gold, the Action Replay Edition. Last time, we set out on our journey from New Bark Town and are about to proceed into the next route. We have our first Pokemon, Soups, our Chikorita, which has a special defense boost and, from what I've looked up, a very good IV, as its somewhat vain will help boost its high special defense levels making it a very good special defensive wall, which might come in handy in terms of team building. But for now, we must proceed. Oh, hold on. Wait, one second. Okay, Professor Elm, what do you want? <clears throat> Sorry about that. I almost completely forgot about this. Here, I'll give you my number. All right, Professor Elm. I'll call you if anything comes up. Thank you. And now, we can finally proceed, hopefully. And I can. Welcome to Route 29, the first route in the Johto region that we can explore. Now, we can encounter wild Pokemon, but we cannot catch them because we lack Pokeballs. We will get Pokeballs, momentar not momentarily, but within the next couple episodes, but for now... I would like to show you some of the wild Pokemon we will be encountering. First up on the list, Sentret. Sentret is a normal type Pokemon that is basically a stock standard normal type Pokemon in terms of what normal type Pokemon can do. It's pretty fast, it's pretty balanced in terms of attack and defense. It's a good Pokemon to start off with, in fact, compare it, comparing it to other normal types you'll encounter early on. Sentret's actually pretty useful to you for the long term because Sentret can learn a lot of moves called HM moves or hidden moves, which basically means you can routinely use those moves multiple times and you have to use them to advance the story, such as cutting down branches, lighting up caves, or surfing on the, on the water. Sentret is more useful than some other Pokemon in terms of learning these abilities, but for now... We cannot catch it. We might catch one later on to serve as an HM user for our team because I don't plan on using HMs on my team unless it benefits them to have it. Rattata is up next. Now, Rattata is a normal type the same way that uh, Sentret is, only Rattata is based, sorry, geared more towards physical attack and speed. It's not the most defensive, and it has almost no special attacking capabilities whatsoever. So if you're going to be relying on a Rattata to boost your team's special capabilities or defensive capabilities, you've come to the wrong Pokemon. And like Sentret, it's very good to use early on, but it unfortunately wears itself out once bigger guns are more available to you. I don't intend on using one on my team. I might use one early on as sort of like a meat shield for soups because as you guys know and have seen so far, soups lacks the physical attacking capabilities that I would necessarily like in a Pokemon, but I like his def I like his defenses. And he learned Razor Leaf. Okay. Good news, we never have to use Tackle again unless I really want to. I don't know why I would want to, but you get the point. Soup's just learned Razor Leaf. Razor Leaf is a Grass-type move, which means it will do more damage with Soup's using it than, say, Tackle would. Because each time you use a Grass-type move with a Grass-type Pokemon, it will gain a boost in Strength. So it'll gain a times 2 effectiveness with you, and then, if you use it on a type that grass is strong against, such as water or ground, it will gain a times 4 advantage, which is very good for us. And will basically mean that even with Soup's stats not being the best in terms of physical attacking, Razor Leaf will do us a lot of good against Pokemon that we might ordinarily have problems with. Not all of them, but some of them. Oh, wow, we're just getting all of them. Pidgey is the next one. Pidgey is a flying type. Normal flying type, to be precise. 
And because it's a flying type, Razor Leaf will not really do much against it. But it's a level 2, so we should basically throttle this thing and wrap out. Anyway, Pidgey is a... There are three flying types you can catch early on in the game. Pidgey being one of them, or normal flying, like I said, that are basically typed differently. Pidgey is more of the well-balanced type. Another that only appears in the morning, Spearow, which we will see at some point, so I will talk about it when we see it, is more geared towards physical offense. And Hoot Hoot, being the one that appears at night, which is based off of an owl, obviously, uh, that one is geared more towards special-oriented stats, such as special defense and special attack. You can use it if you want, but personally... I might not use any of them except, like I said, for early episodes in order to absorb hits for soups while I level him up. Because I want soups to be the toughest guy on the block. He doesn't look like the toughest guy on the block, but I want him to level up and feel like he is. I haven't talked with anybody yet. I'll talk with some of them on our way back. In fact, I'm going to talk to pretty much everybody on our way back. I don't ordinarily recommend fighting wild Pokemon openly, like, during Let's Plays and stuff, but... Like, I, early on, since you can't catch any, and this is the best way to level up your, uh, starter, I recommend it at this point, just, just this once. Otherwise, if you're doing a Let's Play, you might as well do it off-screen, and... Wow, Soups is getting... Soups can handle himself, it's just that... I wanna... Worry, I don't want to worry about him doing damage. It's an apricorn tree, but since I don't have anything to put it in, there's no reason to take it. Those will be important later on, and by important, I mean good for side questing, but at the moment, it's not, like, absolutely vital to know what's going on down there. Alright. I believe that those three Pokemon I mentioned, Pidgey, Centret, and... Uh, Rattata are the only three we can encounter at this point, since it's the middle of the day. In the morning, like I said, you can find Spiro, and at night you can find, um, Hoot Hoot. But welcome to Cherry Grove City, our second town. And this old guy would like to talk to us. You're a rookie trainer, aren't you? I can tell. That's okay. Everyone is a rookie at some point. If you'd like, I could teach you a few things. Okay, then, follow me. I guess he just assumes that I want to learn things. Things I don't already know. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that you weren't wearing the running shoes. I'll try to go as slow as possible, so try keeping up. This is a Pokemon Center. They heal your Pokemon in no time at all. You'll be relying on them a lot, so you better learn about them. Good news about Pokemon Centers is that they are absolutely free. So you don't have to worry about paying to get them healed such as you would if you're buying a lot of potions. This is the Pokemon Mart. They sell Pokeballs for catching wild Pokemon and other useful items. <clears throat> Route 30 is out this way. Trainers will be battling their Pokemon there. If you go a little farther, you'll see Mr. Pokemon's house. This is the sea, as you can see. Some Pokemon are only found in water. Here, it's my house. For your effort keeping up with me, I'll give you my running shoes. They're still warm. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Okay. Got you, didn't I? Don't worry, these are brand new. And we now have the running shoes from the guy Gent. Yay! The instructions read, touch the sprint button on the touch screen to sprint. It also says hold down the B button to sprint. This is the only game that incorporates this and it boggles my mind that this is the only one that does this. In prior games and in all future games, you'd have to hold the B button while running. That's a little annoying for me. That's why I touch the touch screen and you automatically run wherever you want to go, which is good. 
At least again, like I said, if you ask me. You can sprint in virtually every area. There are only a few areas where I don't recommend it or areas that you can't in this game. So you're probably better off doing it my way and just having the yourself automatically sprint because like I said it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for you to do otherwise. When you're with Pokemon, going anywhere is fun. Pokemon gain experience in battle and change their form. I heard that each Pokemon has its own nature and it has something to do with Pokemon stats. I mentioned that before. As every Pokemon will have a different nature. Mine just happens to have calm nature. Other Pokemon will have move natures like serious, jolly, modest, etc, etc. And in this game, at least, from this game forward, they will show you what those stats mean or what those mean in the long term. Early on, you actually had to look it up and figure it out for yourself. You're trying to see how good you are as a Pokemon trainer? You better visit the Pokemon gyms all over Johto and collect badges. Go into that later. When I'm older, I'm going to be a gym leader. I make my Pokemon battle with my friends to make them tougher. I don't see any Pokemon, kid. Soups just looks at you and says, no. I battled the trainers on the road. My Pokemon lost. They're a mess. I must take them to the Pokemon Center. And he's not even walking near the Pokemon Center, so this kid's not the sharpest tool in the shed. We don't have to go in the Pokemon Center for anything at the moment. At least I'm not aware. I don't think there's anybody over here by the water that we can talk to. Because we can't surf. And I don't really have a reason to go into the Pokemon Mart at the moment, because... We have our potions, and we're right near a Pokemon Center, in case I need to heal, so I think we'll be in good hands. Oh god, it's Mr. Greasy Shoes again. <sighs> I made it. I forgot about one thing. This is another token from me. Take it. The guy gent loaded the map card, so now we know the map. Sorry, we have a map. Select the Pokegear on the touchscreen, and then select the town map icon. You'll see the map of the region you're currently in. The Poke Gear becomes more useful as you add cards. I wish you luck on your journey. Aw, thank you. Mr. Creepy Shoes Man. Now, there are a few new Pokemon we can encounter here. Game-oriented, obviously. And, wow, we got it right off the bat. This is Caterpie. Caterpie is a bug type, as you could probably assume, as it is a caterpillar. Bug types that you find early in the game are very useful because they evolve very quickly. And they will have their max stats out basically at like level 10, 11, or 12, something along those lines. Especially Caterpie and its worm counterpart, Weedle. There are downsides though, as these Pokemon don't, all, don't often hold their ground against other Pokemon you can catch for your team. So, while I would recommend you catch them for the early game, long-term, Caterpie and its evolved forms are a little bit more complicated to use. Uh, the same with Weedle, if we ultimately encounter that, which we should. Now, I might use one, I might not. Because I do have another Pokemon in mind that I'm going to be catching in this general vicinity to use either short-term or long-term. You guys don't know. Because you guys don't know what it is yet. You don't know if we've seen it. You don't know if we haven't seen it. And all I basically want to do is just keep leveling up soups, make them tougher and stronger. Unfortunately, early on, a lot of the Pokemon that we'll be fighting aren't that, like, incredibly affected by Grass-type moves, so you gotta be careful, like I said, when picking Chikorita, because it's very difficult to use early on. And we got a free potion! Cool! We can't go this way because we can't surf on water yet, because Chikorita can't swim, and I don't have a Pokemon that can swim. Oh, you're wearing the running shoes. They make you feel like you're flying, don't they? 
but beware of wild Pokemon and trainers. When you run, the noise will attract them. That is true. The more you use the running shoes in areas like this, the more likely you are to encounter wild Pokemon. And the more likely you are to gain the attention of a Pokemon trainer should you encounter one. Now let's go into this house and talk to this guy. People usually come to my house looking for Mr. Pokemon's house. You did mean to visit my house, right? How kind of you. Do you have any apricorns? Apricorn trees bear fruit once a day. I have one of those trees too. Apricorns are really something. You can make pokeballs and other things. They are quite useful. I have a feeling this is meant to be. I'm so happy that I'll give you this. Mikey obtained the apricorn box. Yay! With that apricorn box, you can carry so many apricorns. You'll be a decent apricorn collector. Now, like I said, apricorns will come in handy later. But whenever you see one, you may as well collect one. And we have a green one right here. And hopefully that'll do do us a little bit of justice later on. Nothing out there for us at the moment. Ooh, we got another Pidgey. Good news is Soups will be able to handle these two level 2s very easily very soon. Bad news is, well, like I said, he needs to beef himself up a little bit more. And these level 2s don't give off a lot of experience. Ooh, we got an antidote. I'm not sure that'll come in handy now, but later it definitely will. Antidotes are an item that will allow you to heal yourself of poison, which is definitely useful. A Pokemon can use its moves as long as the moves still have PP. When a move has no PP remaining, that Pokemon cannot use that move. Then you should take your Pokemon to the Pokemon Center. Yes, when a Pokemon has no ability to use any of the moves it has, for example, we have 25 PP of Tackle left, so we can tackle people 25 more times. We can growl 40 more times. Oh, hello. Phone call. Or text. I am going to mute you. Thank you. It was my stat health thing for my Samsung phone. And it's telling me I should be fit more because I walked 15,000 steps yesterday at the Bronx Zoo. But anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. We have a lot of PP here with these moves. Basically, I think 90 PP. So we wouldn't have those problems. If we do our met... <laughs> If we do manage to run out, our Pokemon will be using a move called Struggle, which will do a decent amount of damage, but do damage to us in the process in terms of recoil damage. And I noticed that we are one experience point away from leveling up. I think it is a shame. Oh well, check. Oh well, Soups, let's keep going. Oh my god. Oh, it's my sister. I will text her back in a moment, because this episode is not over yet. And another Caterpie! Yay! I'm gonna speed through this one, because we've seen how to beat Caterpies, and it, it's a it'd be a little insulting if I kept showing you how to fight the same Pokemon again and again and again. I might ultimately choose to cut out wild Pokemon battles later on depending on my mood and the way the episodes are structured in terms of time because time is very important Ooh, what do we got here is that a pink one yes it is we have a pink apricorn now coolio let us enter the house of mr. Pokemon hopefully this is mr. Pokemon you must be Mikey it was I who sent an email to Professor Elm earlier. This is what I want Professor Elm to examine. We obtained the mystery egg! Coolio! Mikey put the mystery egg in the key items pocket. A friend of mine from Ecruteque gave it to me. I bet you can't find this kind of egg in Johto. I thought Professor Elm might be able to tell what this is. He's the best when it comes to the research of Pokemon evolution. 
That's a quote from the famous Professor Oak. You are returning to Professor Elm? Here, your Pokemon should have some rest. So, Soups is back to full power, and Mr. Husk of Corn himself would like to talk to us. And with that, I'm Professor Oak, a Pokemon researcher. So you're Mikey. I was just visiting my friend Mr. Pokemon. I heard you were running an errand for Mr. Elm, Professor Elm, not Mr. Elm. So I waited here. Oh, what's this? A rare Pokemon. I see, you must be helping Professor Elm's research. I think I understand why Professor Elm gave that to you. You will treat your Pokemon with love and care, it seems. Ah, you seem to be dependable. How would you like to help me out? See, this is the latest version of the Pokedex. It automatically records data and Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. I'd like you to have it. We received the Pokedex! Yeah! Go meet many kinds of Pokemon and complete that Pokedex. But I've stayed too long. I have to get to Goldenrod for my usual radio show. Mikey, I have a feeling that this is not the last time we'll meet. Let's exchange numbers just to be on the safe side. Goodbye, Professor Oak. Sorry to trouble you having you go back and forth, but please make sure to hand it to Professor Elm. Alright, let us proceed back. Oh, speak of the devil, Professor Elm called us. Uh, hello, Mikey? It's a disaster. Uh, um, it's just terrible. What should I do? It. Oh, no. Please get back here now. <coughs> Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. And we will have to figure out what that is next episode. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm NintendoMan64. Join me and Soups next time when we go figure out exactly what Professor Elm means when he says get back here now. Do you like me, Soups? Seems to want to return. Wow. I'm sad now. Sayonara.